uh, street committee meeting of the town council of the June 23rd is called to order. And the first item on the agenda is a street vacation request by Gay and Neal for an ordinance to vacate an approximate point zero point one two acre portion of right away along the east side of North Franklin Street. The portion right away joins one hundred acres farm road. That sounds yeah, this is where the bank is under construction there. Um, acres farm road. Uh, which bank is that? Summit Summit Bank. Tony Tony Harris of uh, Summit Bank. Some community bank. I'm not it's sure. Sort of, you know, pretty modern looking building there, but that, that's the location. Uh, where is Acre? Uh, I'm not sure. Where it's uh, almost across, across from the Food Line Plaza on North Franklin. Yeah, across from Point Funeral. Yeah, okay, yeah, okay. Yeah. So the crest of that hill up there. Yes. Yeah. Okay. At the new signal. Well, practically near the, okay. near the new signal. I got you. Okay, across from Horn. Church, church is at the signal, but. Now, I do have a question, but since I'm new to this part of it, when, when they, we say vacate, are they asking the town to give up the street? Yes. Okay. Not they don't. And what the situation is there is we do have extra wide right away that I don't think we'll real, realistically ever use. Um, you know, it's pretty normal on uh, primaries to have extra wide right away. You know, typical residential street, you get 50 feet of right of way, 30 feet of pavement, it's fairly normal. But, you know, major corridors like that, they're typically 100 feet right of way or more. And they typically vary because often they'll buy an entire property to, for the right of way alignment mm -hmm. or, or for the wide. So you'll all, often, along primaries, you'll often have jogs in and out of properties for the right of way line. Uh, if you can turn on the, the property line layer, maybe on RGIS, it can show you. Yeah, but, but basically, this th that little, uh, I guess, diamond-shaped area uh -huh. is right away that they would like to add to the bank lot. <coughs> the town doesn't have any particular use for it. Uh, I don't feel like we would put a bus stop in there, personally. I think if we were going to have a bus stop, I would probably send them up Acres Farm Road, tell them to turn around and actually stop on Acres Farm Road, mm -hmm. ra rather than have a bus stop right there. Uh, give you an idea though, over at the Food Line Plaza, there's even a whole lot extra right away there and they asked us about vacating it. I told them there I didn't really want to because of the potential for a bus stop there. Mm -hmm. We might have a, a full dedicated pull-off for a bus stop there. And the reason for their request is just extra, extra property to add to their lot, and I think they actually want to put their sign in, in that area. So, so they had originally, and this has been kicking around for really since they first looked at the property, um, there's, there's plans or there's talk about potentially putting a second building there on the front part. Mm -hmm. um, so if anything, this would give them some setback relief just where the setbacks come in so far. Um, they also expressed interest in the sign. Um, however, just based on the based on the topography, they really want the sign as close to in line with the bank building as possible, so that it's visible to northbound northbound traffic to, to see it. Um, and there is an existing PU PUE and DE that runs there. Um, and then within the within the portion that's requesting to be vacated. Uh, there are a number of utilities. Um, we do have a uh, stormwater uh, drain that runs through that, that comes through sort of towards the entrance of the property, um, and there is also a ditch. So mm -hmm. the ordinance that's currently written would still retain public utility easements and drainage easements over this section. What's the building setback for commercial property? Does 30, 30 feet from street right away. So that would help them with a building setback at some it point. It would, maybe. although the building's really all already under roof. I mean, well, that building, but you said they might build another building on the other. I, I don't think they've mentioned building another okay. building. I, I'd heard a sign as a possibility. Uh, yeah. well, I guess they mentioned that earlier on. The building conversation had come up, I think, when they were originally scouting this location is, is trying to potentially save some space in the front if they do an additional building. 
Well, one immediate benefit, and it's a small one, is, I mean, is that would go on the tax rolls that would make the parcel bigger, uh, be on the tax rolls. And my, my personal sentiments on that are, I look to you guys, to our staff to say, is this a why, you know, you know what we need now, what we might need in the future, and if that has some adds benefit or adds value to the tax, you know, the size of the parcel and increases the developability and we have no need for it and the staff recommends it, that's sort of where I'm at on that. I'd be okay. Uh, I could support that. All right. I have a question to make sure I got my burns here. They already have a roadway going to the bank, correct? Acres, Acres Farm is a public street. Acres Farm, yeah. And, of course, North Franklin is. Yeah. Uh, you know, the drive in into the bank's private, but... So, that's what I'm trying... Okay, I'm kind of lost. What part are they asking for us to vacate then? This, that, that diamond that place shape. right on the corner. So, you know, on, on the southern... On the lower side is North Franklin Street. Okay. Over on the left-hand side is Acres Farm Road. Gotcha. And you can see where their entrance is, is going to be located. Right. And, of course, the building, like I say, the building's on okay. the roof now. The building's almost done. So where is, because there is a catch pond over there now, correct? The, there is, but it's on they, the other side. It's on, it's on their property. Okay, <clears throat> that, that happened because I know where that pond, I, okay. All right. So it kind of, you know, it kind of evens up, squares off the property to a certain degree. It, it does provide them flexibility with the placement of their side, you know, as well. Well, not not really because you know unless we were to uh, it would if easements were not retained over there. I mean, I I, I really think right. that I see. Yeah. The, you know the easements. I mean, we generally speaking, don't allow signage within within easements. Are those easements being used? Well, it's currently right. Away. But we've got there, lines in there. Right, so, so, so right. Yes. Yeah. There are, there are. Yeah. So there's 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 power that, that runs yeah. under here. And then we have we have a drain that runs that runs through here. But those easements are not shown on that sketch. Well there wouldn't there's currently not an easement because it's right. Proposed easements. Because we would retain easement. Right. We but those aren't shown on there. We would, we would retain, it's currently written, we would retain these. I, I assume it's so. the ordinance, and the ordinance says that the town retains a 20-foot drainage easement centered on the existing storm storm drain line. The easement currently says, the draft easement currently says over the portion to be vacated, it really retains it over, over all of it. Okay, so the whole, the whole of it would remain an easement. Yeah. They, so they would, in which case, they wouldn't be able to put a sign on it. It doesn't benefit them from a sign, a sign standpoint. It would potentially benefit them right now from a potential building in the future. Right. And this the size of the lot. Because right. even if there's an easement on it, it would still, yeah. they'd be paying It would always help them with green space if they wanted to add. Right. Okay, so this is, once again, this is the grassy area. Yes. See, this is what's throwing me off. I mean, mm -hmm. I know now, cause when I say street committee, yeah. I'm thinking there's a street that we're giving up. So we're give, really giving up. Or the sidewalks, sidewalks in that area. Okay. Yeah. I didn't see him. I'm with you now. Okay. Yeah. 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 So it's really, That's a good picture right there. Yeah. yeah so the, the strip is really kind of, where it's so deep, the strip is really. Oh, okay. It's really kind of here. It's such a deep right away. So the sidewalks are. Uh, Okay. And sidewalk is being added as part of our North Franklin Corridor project. Hmm. All right. Which is, is the least formed now, if not poor. I think it's pretty much poor. Mr. Bishop, you okay? Well, well, I'm, I'm going to say I'm kind of like Brad. I, if you if you all don't think the town's going to need that for any reason. You know, like, like I say, I guess to me, the only thing I can kind of think of is a potential bus stop, and I just don't think that's the best yeah. spot for a bus stop. Right right there on the corner. 
traffic uh, like I say, I think if we were going to put a bus stop in, I think we'd send the bus up Acres Farm Road, turn down, and mm -hmm. then put the stop on Acres Farm Road on the right on the right hand side coming out. Okay. Well, that's a cul de sac back there. Isn't yeah. It? Yes, it is. It's a yeah. big one. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so the bus wouldn't have a problem navigating that, I don't think. Of course, there's already a stop up there at Northgate. And that's pretty steep, pro steep property there too, right? It, it is, I guess, uh, kind of the crest of the hill. It is. Mm -hmm. that's, that's kind of another reason I didn't really like the bus stop there. Mm -hmm. Just. I, I didn't We're think I didn't think it was a good stop for spot for a bus stop. And removing the bus stop, I believe, uh, down is in that right wing with the right. street. Yes. How many yeah. feet is it? How many feet is that from the? Uh, how many feet is that from the stoplight at Independence? Is that interest? Maybe. Well, that's a good distance. It's a good ways, isn't it? Yeah, there's Horn and High School. Yeah, it's yeah. a ways. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's a good distance. Okay. Well, are you favorable? Yeah. Okay. So uh, we will recommend approval based on that, based on staff recommendation. And the only clarification is, if we vacate it, we're still may, uh, we're still retaining a twenty foot. We're retaining all of it for easement purposes. Different, I guess, different easements. Oh, okay. It's drainage easement for all of it and public utility easement for all of it. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, a quick, another quick question. I know the town's not in the business of selling real estate, but if the town was to sell that little strip, what do you think that's value of that? I mean, to me, I don't know what you're going to do with it. Nor normally, if we vacate things, they go to the property that it was dedicated from. Mm -hmm. On the same side of the street, in which case it would go to yeah. them. Yeah. Um, if you had that appraised, it probably praise at a few thousand dollars. Yeah. Um, you know, if we vacate it and we don't put a note on it to re that we want to retain it, it's going to go to them. Mm -hmm. um, this type of thing, you know, would they pay us a few thousand for it? Maybe. If council would like to ask that, they can, but we just typically haven't done that. Right. Yeah. And a lot, a lot of times, uh, Mr. Bishop, we're requested and favorable towards vacating right away on old, what they call paper streets that are little alleyways mm -hmm. back when neighborhoods were laid out 60, oh, yeah. 80 years ago and they've never been used and right. never going to be built. So what happens when they vacate that is it splits between the two property owners. But well, that part I understood, and I guess that's what's yeah. getting, that's what I'm referring back to me, okay. you know, in the hang of this. Like I said, a paper, it's a street, even though it's not paved. Right. This is land, a parcel. Yeah. Could, so you I'm know, it's, it's a small, you know, 0. 0.12 acres. That's, yeah. not, that's not a very big not, piece of land. Not, yeah. Like I say, it, it, it's probably going to have a few thousand dollar value if, if, if you put an assessment on it. But, but we'll get that back in taxes. I, I think, you know, eventually. Eventually. It's almost as big as my property. Well, <laughs> <laughs> well anymore. Yeah. I'm getting close. It's knocking okay. on the door. Okay. That was a, that's just a general question. I mean, no, I'm not. Another point on value, too, is if, if, if we're still retaining some interest in it, which we are through the easement. Yeah. So, so there's still we still have the value. utility of it. We yeah. still use it if we need to. But they have to maintain it. They have to they have to maintain it. It gets one more. Parcel that we don't have to. Have other guys will have to move. Okay. Well, if 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 Mr. Bishop's okay, we move on. We have five more items, so um, we're good on that. Um, item number two is an all-way stop consideration at Spradlin Farm Drive and Constant Avenue. And uh, give you an idea of the neighborhood. This is near Chick Fil A. Yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. And uh, I got a call from uh, John Allen. He lives at. 1135 College Street, and basically the, the Chick-fil-A, I guess, and, and the blockage there at the intersection was the concern. Mm -hmm. uh, it is pretty common if you're coming from Spradlin Farm Drive towards Constant from the north that you'll get backed up there, and uh, you, you do see a pretty good backup. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, I yeah. think <laughs> the reason for the backup is 
the constant flow from constant coming doesn't really give them a good opportunity to turn to turn to go straight or to turn left. I, I guess if you're going right, you're okay, but you still have to pull all the way up and look good. Mm -hmm. um, the, the suggestion was for an all-way stop in that it, it would free up the movements a little bit for the constant avenue rights, rights, lefts, and straight throughs, and kind of clear, clear the intersection a little quicker, was the thought. Um, you know, I, one of the first things I usually think of when I look at always stops is what's the flow of traffic, and is it close enough to 50-50 that it kind of makes sense? And I think in this situation, it kind of does. Um, you know, it's, it's, but both of those streets carry a lot of traffic. Um, I, don't I, I don't necessarily see one of them as, as more used. I guess Constance probably a little more used, but it's not drastically more used. It's flat, so, you know, for that reason, I don't think it's difficult to stop. I, I think it could probably help the situation. One concern that, that the engineering staff brought up, and we talked about a little bit more, Justin was able to grab me earlier on this, was he, the, the, the concern that you have basically eight lanes that are stopping, two of each stop, and just the stopping motions of one person turning right, and you have to kind of know where your buddy's going, and, and then you have to look to see where all the, all the movement's happening at the time. So, so there was a concern with, with the four-way stops. There. And because he's multi lane. Like two other options right. as well that, that we so take a look at. Staff went up here today. Unfortunately, we got there a little late, so we're going to get up here before lunch tomorrow. Mm -hmm. and I want to see and observe what's going on. Uh, we have a couple you mean problems. Samantha from engineering? Oh, Samantha. I'm I sorry. know what may. <laughs> I know what may. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's okay. <laughs> I know I wouldn't. I said, I wouldn't there. <laughs> no, I'm with you. <laughs> you know, so, another, I'm not sure what he has for B, but mm -hmm. oftentimes coming down Spratlin, you'll pass the bank. It was, I'll speak to you before I. Well, I'll, I'll go ahead and do the option A because I think that's. Okay, that, that. Uh, so, so that's existing. So this is. What it is today. Okay. Yeah. With, with, uh, I'm sorry, Ron. So this no, you're this good. one, this uh, option has a lane extension. Yeah, extending, yeah. extending, extending the uh, left turn lane there is one right. option. So it's by 60 feet into Chick fil A to allow these, these vehicles to pass and then, and then to keep the stop signs the way they are today. That, and that, that may be a, another good, suitable alternative. Uh, I kind of dropped this on engineering late, so sorry, sorry about that. Well, because I've seen traffic coming this way and traffic trying to make a left turn to Chick-fil-A, it's backing up a lot of stuff. I mean, I don't know what Chick-fil-A is yeah, selling, yeah. but... Oh. <laughs> yeah, everything, yeah, <laughs> as much chicken as they can. But, I mean, it is crowded. I actually got a call from a lady who suggested kind of the same problem, although she, she suggested limit, limiting a left out of Chick-fil-A. And I don't think that really, you know, fixes the problem. That, that, you know, that just kind of fixes the problem maybe for people pulling out a Chick-fil-A. Yeah. And, and you do all, you, you all have all these options um, in one of your handouts. Okay. That, uh, by the, that you do the same. Oh, okay, yeah. So. The so traffic turning into Chick-fil-A can walk through traffic. Mm -hmm. right. Trying to make it to the intersection that causes yeah. problems. And then there's a constant flow from constant on to Spradlin, mm -hmm. and, and the traffic is backed up at the signal. And the people are trying to get in the Chick Fil A. Yeah. It's a so I, I guess we could preface this as in talking with you know just looking at it today. We would like some more time to study it. Yeah, right. But, but yeah. we would like to we did at least kind of bring some uh, options of what we're thinking to be yeah. able to tonight. And so the uh, yeah. kind of the option B was just keep two stop signs but flip it so that right. it, uh, so that it would be on uh, on constant. 
the A stop, which allows traffic to, to flow and allow opportunity to, to make it through the intersection and make a left into Chick fil A. If you did that, I mean, I know you don't have a crystal ball. You think people would really, uh, over time they would get used to it, I'm sure. I, I think I think we would have to come paint probably stop bars. I be used to going oh, yeah. through there, and then all of a sudden. Often we'll say a new traffic pattern. Sound yellow. Okay. Flag. You know, I think that work, would probably work pretty well, too. Huh. You know, maybe we do some combination of these things. Yeah. That with the extending that lane right there, mm -hmm. allow yeah. I think a good point was made about the multi-lane segment is not a, is not a, right. that's a very good, that's an apt observation. And as staff looks at this, I think that the caution would be, yes, we should always be open to making things, you know, to improving the situation. But in this case, the uh, adage about making sure the medicine is not worse than the disease is that applies here because you are going to increase people's frustration level with the new traffic mm -hmm. scenario there. And I think as you're looking at that, that would be the word of caution is to make sure that we're not doing, if we really think that that's going to have a benefit, then we should do it. Yeah. But if it's 50, 50 and we're not sure and we don't have a high level of confidence, then I would caution against that because it's just going to add one more level of frustration with a multiple stop, multi, two lanes of traffic stopping, and, and not knowing who's going first and it's already congested, then you get into, but anyway, I'm not saying we shouldn't, but I'm saying right. always keep an open mind, but make sure that we're not doing it just for the sake of doing it, that we make sure that the medicine's, you know, not worse than the disease. It's signed the way it was when it first opened, back when there was hmm. not a whole lot going on. And sometimes, and, and the other observation is that, as, as an as an engineer, when you go out there and observe it, some of these clever ideas about storage lane extensions and you know maybe some simple paint striping type of things could actually uh, provide more relief than a four-way stop. Okay, so look forward to hearing what you have on that. And uh, Mr. Bishop, any other comments on that? No, I'm good. Well, thanks Thank for bringing you. that up. That's interesting. Okay. So item three is always stop at Clearview and Williams. I know Clearview, I'm not sure about yeah, Williams. I'm a, I'm uh, Williams is kind of a little connector street that really doesn't carry a lot of traffic. Right. Um, between, uh, let's see, what's the street to the east of Clearview that runs parallel? Right, right below Reagan. Uh, Taylor maybe? Uh, anyhow, Williams doesn't, it's, it's like I say, it's a little side street that really doesn't carry much traffic. Uh, we went out and looked at this, staff did, and I guess Wayne, Andrew, and I didn't feel this was the best location for an all-way stop. Uh, the reason, and I guess the reason for the request is speeding on, right. on Clearview, okay. and of course cut through traffic. Right. And I think, you know, this is an attempt to try to address that in their mind. I just don't think a, an all-way stop is the best way to address it. And, and part of my reasoning is, you know, it, if you look at the traffic split through there, it's probably 95% Clearview and 5% so Williams Street. And uh, it just doesn't, you know, right. it doesn't make sense to hold up 95% of the traffic okay. for 5%. For 5%. But there is a stop sign on Williams Street? Yes, there is. Okay. Yes, there is. I'm like, I know I've been by that street, but it's... Yep. Go to the east. So, okay, so, so between James and Radford, there's Ford and both well, uh, Clearview. Mm -hmm. You're going to make your way over to the apartments or to the old one road. You could take the way on the road. So, so there's, not, there's not a lot of traffic that comes up. Yeah, that's not a very long street, is it? Mm -hmm. Uh, William Street definitely is not a long street. Right. You know, Clear, Clearview is pretty long and that's pretty Clearview. straight. And people yeah. probably, you know, probably do build up speed coming down that hill. Yeah. You know, right. I mean, I know they do. Yeah. We've had a number of uh, speed studies over the years. 
and then the latest one was 2019, which I think we saw some, uh, some, some variation in the speeds, but it still was within, uh, uh, it was within the 85% mile. Yeah. Um, you know, so when, when it was looked at at the street committee, I think it was January of 2019, there, there was no, there, there wasn't any recommendation. A documented there. problem. Yeah. Part of it, um, and Mr. Bishop knows this from patrolling streets, but when you have a narrow street, yeah. it, it makes, it get, put it this way, traffic going the same speed on Patrick Henry Drive in Blacksburg versus uh, Lee Street. <laughs> oh, I know, yeah. It, 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 it feels totally faster when it's on a narrow street, and right. I get that. So uh, there is a difference. Yeah, well, see, I know where we, I'm, I'm, I know where the street's at now, but it's just, I'm like mm -hmm. you. And, yeah, I'd, I'd say so. I think I, I actually think it could result in more accidents. That's, that's, yeah, that's, and that's what I would probably think. Yeah, yeah, you're creating a stop condition. Anytime you create a stop condition, you do. You know, you have to really study that. To, uh, in the traffic calming, we have the traffic calming program, but I don't know. This is a collector street, and that also doesn't meet the warrant for is it a collector street it, it would meet the warrants for the traffic calming program but th okay. then again if it falls under the traffic calming program for physical measures it takes a survey of the neighborhood right and we've kind of put the onus on the, the requester to yeah to survey the neighborhood right okay. um, you know Allegheny and Miller we did it ourselves but that was the first street and council right. agreed we'd look at it our own so we, we surveyed them there right right well, uh, you know, so, something like what we did with the increase, I'm, I'm not a huge fan of speed tables, although that's a possible phys physical measure. The increased fines for speeding is what we wound up doing, and that's what the neighborhood agreed to, Allegheny yeah. and Miller, yeah. is uh, basically increased fines for speeding. Uh, it was close, but they did not request the uh, speed bumps or speed tables. Mm -hmm. Okay. So... Mr. Bishop, what do you think? I agree with what they said. I mean, yeah. I think we make it all the way stop. It's going to cause more problems than it's worth. Yeah. I mean, it does. But this request so. came from uh, Logan Bain, and he lives there on Clearview, down towards uh, the Radford Street side. Oh, yeah. And uh, I'll get back with them and just let them know we don't think it's the best candidate for an all the way stop, but that we'll look at it in, in regards to speeding. Right. Yeah. That's. That's good. I'm good. I'm good with that too. Okay, uh, number four, item four, College Street, Northwest speeding concerns. College Street, Northwest. Okay. And uh, got this request from uh, Chris Mullins. He lives uh, on the northern side of College Street, and kind of towards the area that got flooded. Like I say, on the on the northern side, there. and just basically uh, complained about speeding through the neighborhood, largely resulting through cut through traffic, which I, I know they probably receive on College Street. Andrew, you're learning the town very well. <laughs> I still I still have a hard time in town in finding stuff. And this is really good. out more towards the, the area of college that is uh, residential. That's what, what he was talking about. Yeah. We're a little further north than we're on the side Yes. I think he kind of, like I say, he lives on the, right on the northern side of the college. So that's so where we're... People that kind of come here as a hot turn. Mm -hmm. So sort of also we're having the flooding problems. Yes. Yeah. Um, this type of thing, I, I'm kind of putting it on here as an introduction, and I was going to ask Chief Sisson to maybe have a speed study done. Maybe the same thing with Clearview. Just, just have a current speed study. I would be interested. I would. Uh, I don't. I'm not up that street a lot, but do you, what's your gut tell you? Do you think this is, or is it one of the narrow streets? It's a narrow. It's a narrow, windy street. So 25 miles an hour on that <laughs> looks like 35 or 40 when it's narrow. Yeah. It's, yeah I mean, that is narrow. It is narrow. Is that? Is, is, it, is it striped? Uh, I don't think it I, is. I don't think it is. Yeah. Yeah. No. There's a I don't think it is. So, no. so that's another thing, you know, it depends on. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, so um, speed study will you know, tell us if there's a problem. Prefer not to strike for streets if we don't have oh, to. Right. 
But, you know, if it's something that maybe makes a difference in calming traffic, we're definitely open to it. Hmm. We've had complaints about people, put, you know, putting stripes out there because it... All right. Yeah. So, next step on that then is, a, is to... I'll, I'll have Chief do a speed study. study. Speed study same something thing like with that. Clearview. Okay, very good. Okay, item five, discussion of Glade Drive speed study. I know where that is. Yeah, that's out there uh, off of Tower um, Road. There is a copy of the speed study that uh, the FPD conducted. Oh, yes. Uh, for the second week of June. I think the average speed was 20, 20 miles an hour. So, okay. well, say 85th percentile is 24 and a half. So, 85% of the traffic is percentile is speed limit. Pace speed, speed range was 18 to 28. Mm -hmm. So that's indicating that's not documenting a serious problem out not, there. Not per our traffic calming document, it's not. And this was over how many days? Total days of data, five the days. To the 13th. Yeah. So you got a week in, weekend and weekdays. June 9th through the thirteenth. So picked up a Saturday as well. Okay. So this was something that Chief had mentioned in one of our previous yeah, meetings. We, we had gotten some complaints in regards to speeding on Glade also. So you may recall this, this was the one that came through um, Board of Supervisor uh, Sherry Blevins. Yes. And was referred okay. to, to staff that way. Yes. And, uh, and so, uh, I did reach out to uh, the woman that, that sent the original email, Elizabeth Whitlock, today, and she lives in this block here, and she understood the findings. Um, she she did say, you know, the 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 uh, the, the data was was uh, captured here, around here, mm -hmm. and, and she said, well, it, I do feel like they do speed up some. Um, going to the new neighborhood when they get into the flat, to the street area here uh -huh. on Blade Drive. So that was one, something that you, you can circle back around with Chief Sisson on um, to see if you feel like it would be you know, worth it to, to look at a little further. I, mean, I think she's also thinking about the future as well when the, this road here connects back to it right. and, and all the homes are through the, this area. Yep. And, uh, so question for you. Um, one thing we were criticized for with a similar speed study we did on Cambria was the covert the covert radar to where they don't know they're being measured. Mm -hmm. Because when they see, you know, and I'm that way too, if you see that, yeah. it brings your attention to it. We're, we're humans. Yeah, these these really studies, the chief uses the stealth unit. The stealth, yeah. So this was done with stealth, so people did not know they're being recorded. Okay. So that has more validity. Yeah. Too. They're not being warned that they're being watched. Hmm. Okay. Well, that's a good thing. So if we so. set the, set it up on the other part of the street, is that a big chore? No, it's, I mean, it fastens to a pole. You know, it probably takes an officer. You have to calibrate it. Yeah. I mean, that, that's, you know, it's, it's not a huge chore. I mean, you know, it's, I mean, that's it's pr probably an hour or so to go out and set it up, and then you go out and take it down. and bring it back, collect the data. Yeah, personally, I would like to see the study and where she's really complaining about in that area. I mean, if it's on the straight part of the street, you want to see back? if it's a big difference or not. You want to go back and check check where? Yeah, because you're right, if you come around that curb and the stuff, you can be slowing, hopefully. <laughs> you she, she recognized that, you know, it's, that it could be her perception. Right, and oh yeah. And it is a narrow street again. It, yeah, resident. I think it's a matter of when the kids are playing in the front yard and see sure. a car come by. Okay, can you show, point out again where the stealth unit was put on that sketch? It, was, it says it's in the 2400 block, I believe. Which is around. 
So right around, mm -hmm. yeah, right around in there. So straight away. Okay. I'm not exactly what, okay. This I have in my mind. So it was there and she's, and she opined and she this force in that, in that area. To okay. be honest, if people are speeding, they're probably speeding coming off a tower mm -hmm. as soon as you turn off because right. you've got that downhill. Yeah. And there's nothing. you got the radio towers on the right. There's yeah. Nobody there. Yeah, no houses. Few townhouses off to the road. Yes. Yeah, that's where your speeding is probably going to be up there in that straightaway, right? Well, is that your pleasure, Mr. Bishop? You want to? I would like to see do a study closer to where she feels the complaints are taking place, because they go, could make go a difference. Go a step further, maybe. Yes. Maybe yeah. not next week, but it's. No, I'm no. I mean, no big rush, but right, yeah, no big rush. Yeah, but maybe. Again, we can compare to compare the two also to see okay. if there's a difference. <clears throat> Can we do, yeah, so is yes. that okay? Certainly. We'll do that uh, in the next few months. Okay. okay. Thank you. Okay, and I'd also ask, as a courtesy to Ms. Blevins, who represents those folks, if you would, if, if you would have staff send her that, copy Mr. Bishop and me, and say that we reviewed that, mm -hmm. and uh, just note that the, you know, you might just, even if it's a screen capture as a show, uh, the, the overall summary, that's very interesting. So yeah. the speed range was 18 to 28, and the, let's document the highlights and let her know that we looked at it, and uh, that would be much appreciated by her. Yeah. And, and it may be that it's no word to place that step unit on that, so they could, yes. why they didn't do it. I mean. Okay. Yeah. I'll check with the PD to see if there was an extenuating circumstance. If it's not, it's not. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I understand. Yeah. You know, they, they do kind of put them on straight shots. Okay. You, you, you pretty yeah. much have to. And I you think you're going Okay, so there may not be a place for them to stick. Put it. There's probably somewhere you can put it down there. Okay. There's enough straight away in front of her house. I think you could find, find somewhere. Okay. All you, right. If you would close the loop by doing that, I think that'll have that'll be much appreciated. Yeah. Let her know that we dug into that. Okay, um, <clears throat> last and certainly not least, the North Franklin Street, Cambridge Street signal timing. And obviously we don't control this signal. I just put it on there to let you know. Uh, I've gotten a lot of complaints about it. Yeah. Uh, we've gotten a lot of complaints on social media. I've asked VDOT to look at it. I've actually been told a lot of people VDOT control the signal and I've given them VDOT numbers. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, just but making you aware, it's a pretty big concern with the timing there. It is, I mean, I've gone out there several times, back up, and it is, a, it's a long wait. So I kind of take the shortcut. Well, <laughs> I mean, you, yeah. you know, it might be defeating a purpose, but you're sitting there forever, yeah. and there's nothing coming. Well, lately, what, you know, I've, I've been in that area of like the marketplace area, I'll get on the bypass rather than, than coming to business route. Yeah. Uh -huh. All right. Yeah. Please do. I was out there last Friday morning observing, and I picked up on the possibility that the detection system may, there may be an issue with it. So actually, VDOT's coming out tomorrow to take a look at that. Oh, okay. I, 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 I noticed what I call hiccups, the timing would, would alter. Mm -hmm. I wasn't quite sure why it was doing it. So they, they are going to look at that. Okay. Um, you know, back, when, back when the traffic was backed up at the new signal, back towards, towards Sheep, right. um, the slip lane of the Street was not open. The right. contractor yeah. still has control of the intersection and work to do it close. So that's now on. I think that's happening. The uh, the uh, VDOT's going to review the timing. Uh, the timing was set during design when A was pre pandemic. Uh, there was concern by VDOT that the traffic would back up onto the bypass. Uh -huh. but there isn't as much traffic coming from Blacksburg as there was back during the design phase. Mm -hmm. so, they're going to take a look at that. Yeah. Also, the new signal when you come up to it, 
Well, God said they're open to looking at traffic counts and considering right turn or red. Right. It's going to involve uh, adjustment of the stop bars. But again, we're not going to try to get the contractor done and out of here yeah. so we can sure. take ownership and then we can make some changes mm -hmm. that we can use to help traffic. So, uh, That's a good update. So now, so now you say ownership, so eventually that'll fall under the town, that light? No, it, okay. no it'll still be the Okay. So right now, the contractor. Gotcha. When do you think it's going to go in? Pardon me? When do you think that the light is going to be in? Light, you know, what? The, the new one at Patrick's Way? Uh -huh. uh, don't know their schedule yet. Okay. Uh, it's, oh, soon. But they're finishing that project this summer, right? Yes. Yeah. And that's on schedule too, right? Pretty well, much or how? He's a little behind. He's, he's having trouble with his sidewalk. Okay. A, I think they're a DVD. Uh-huh. He can't. He's got to use them. He's had trouble keeping them on the job. Uh-huh. They're making progress. They're getting the street lights up. We're getting ready for the game. So the sidewalk is becoming a critical path? Yes. Yeah. Over here in this room? Okay. Okay. Um, is there any update? Um, I know we pinged uh, Mr. We pinged uh, the district, Salem district, about the overall traffic uh, <clears throat> study. Yeah. For no more updates on that. But I have seen that they've been putting up the cameras. The deep, it looks like video detection cameras mm -hmm. on the other on the other stoplights. So I think you know, I haven't heard anything, but it looks like they're getting ready to do something big in there. A fully coordinated network through there. So you, have, you, you haven't heard anything on that. I have not. Okay. Seen. okay. Well, if, Mr. yeah. So we have probably going to do it. To set up okay. Yeah. I should have said that before. No, fine. Mr. Bishop, you have anything other business? Okay. okay. Great, great updates. Thanks for touching on some things and putting us, uh, putting, letting us know what's going on. It was a great. That was a very good meeting. Thank you both. Or thank you everybody. Yeah.